for the longest time, actually using a capo to properly transpose songs was a skill that I thought was akin to like health insurance or paying taxes, where I don't really know what I'm doing, but I know I should be doing it. But I finally figured out how to use this thing, and I just kind of want to share maybe some stuff that gets overlooked when using a capo, because when it comes to actually transposing songs, there's no better or easier way to do it, but I want to talk about why we always see a capo on like maybe the third fret, while we, while we rarely see it past the seventh fret. And basically the way to use this is a tool and not a crutch, okay? So we're gonna start off just like learning the main six chords, you already know these chords, but I think it's good to talk about them in groups, right? When you first start out playing guitar, it's like, oh, maybe you learn your, your freshman 15 chords. I think that's a disservice to learn it that way. I think it makes sense to learn chords in groups, and that's what's gonna lead us to the capo, right? So usually the main group that everybody learns first are the chords in the key of C, right? So you have like a C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor, any key, only has like six main chords in it, all right? Now this works for the vast majority of popular songs especially. They don't have key changes, they don't go outside of the key. They only use six chords, sometimes not even that many. A lot of times it'll be like three, four chords tops, right? But learning the six chords in a key is fundamental. The nice thing about a capo is it lets us use those same chord shapes in any key, all right? When you're first starting out, it kind of sucks going from like a C to a D minor to an F or a G. But seeing those as numbers, C, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor, as one, two, three, four, five, six, is the most important piece of music theory or whatever that you can ever learn. If you don't know anything from any of the videos that I've posted, that is the one thing you need to learn, right? So if we were to play something in the key of C sharp, let's just take that progression, a one, four, five, right? C to F to G. That's a one, four, five progression. Tons of songs are in there, right? If you're singing along and maybe it's a little too low, pop a cape on the first fret and then you actually get those same chords, but now you use the same fingerings, right? Those same shapes, but you get different chords. Now, in reality, we're playing a C sharp or a D flat, an F sharp and a G sharp, okay? So using this all throughout the neck, if, that's, if you wanna go higher, go to the fifth fret. You can still use these chords, but you're actually playing in a different key, all right? Now, the next thing that I'd urge you to do is to learn another key's worth of chords and shapes. And we're gonna get to why you kind of see capos in certain spots all over the time, right? Usually the second key that people learn is the people's key, the key of G major, all right? So again, just six chords, G major, is the one chord now. A minor and B minor are the two and three. C major is the four. D major is five. E minor is six. So even though they share certain chords, right? They both have like a C major, G major, E minor, A minor, stuff like that. Those are different chords, but the shapes are kind of similar. Usually they're some of the first chords that you learn, right? But the important thing is the key of C and the key of G are pretty much as far away uh, as you can get from each other in the musical alphabet, right? Like just for example, there's only 12 notes in all of music, in all of Western music. The third fret on the E string is a C. We can count through all of them. C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G. That takes us all the way to the 10th fret. Okay, remember this because it's gonna come in handy in a second. So the 10th fret on the A string is a G. So from three to 10, again, that's seven notes. We said there's only 12. So like six notes away is kind of like as far as you can get until you start over again, right? So learning those two chords, those, the, those clusters of chords, will really help you in being able to kind of like work on your capo theory, okay? So let's actually get to the capo in general, right? We just said that the G on the A string is the 10th fret. So let's pretend that we're gonna play a C major chord on that spot. So your ring finger is gonna act like it's a C, right? But then now if we put a capo on the seventh fret, we can play those same chords, let's say a one, four, five, with our key of C shapes. Again, one being C, four being F, and five being G. But in reality, the one chord, this C shape is actually giving us a G major. The four chord shape is actually giving us a C major. 
And then the five chord shape, which is a G shape, is giving us a D major chord. So the reason you don't see the C shape chords on capo seven or higher is because you could easily play a one, four, five, and G, G, using your G chord shapes, okay? So once you're armed, with just two sets of chord clusters, the key of C chords and the key of G chords, you never have to go past the seventh fret, right? Because you could play your key of C chords on like the eighth fret, but at that point you're getting kind of high up. Why don't you just play your key of G chords on the first fret? That's why it, I think it really helps to memorize at least like the E and A string notes uh, up to like the seventh fret because once you have that you'll have a basis to root any of your chord progressions on right thinking of two clusters of chords and then eventually you'll branch out into other chords now there still might be advantages like maybe there is a, a perfectly good reason that you would want to put the capo on the seventh fret and use the key of she the, the key of she the key of C chords right the nice thing about uh, maybe going from like a C to an F a lot of different hammer-on opportunities, right? So there are contextual ways that maybe you would want it, but in my personal opinion, if you're accompanying a singer and it's just a singer and an acoustic guitar or you're singing along with it, I do think that there's a depth that you gain by playing the open key of G chords rather than the seventh fret key of C chords because they're the same chords in reality, it's just the fingerings are different. Okay, now another question is, why is it always capo on the third fret? Why, why do I always see that so many times? Well, let's use your key of C chords, capo on the third fret, right? So if we do this, our C major is rooted right here on what ends up being the sixth fret of the A string, okay? Now this note is an E flat. Eh? Guitarists have tried for millennia trying to figure out what the chords in the key of E flat are. Nobody's ever figured this out. Nobody, no guitar player knows what chords go in the key of E flat. So we can just play our C chords in there. Again, one, two, three, four, five, six. C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major. Those are all the chords in the key of E flat. A one, four, five. And E flat is as simple as just playing C, F, G with the capo on the third fret, okay? So I do think that that's one of those things like the key of E flat would be the same as if you tuned your guitar uh, a step down to B like an E flat, then you could play key of E major chords, right? So again, one of the reasons that I urge people not to use the capo as a crutch is because you might be missing out on some really cool uh, different things that you could do. Like there are other keys that have a lot of different advantages, which I'll talk to you, you about after I tell you that this video is sponsored by Court. This is the Court Gold A6. They sent me this guitar and they've been nice enough to sponsor this video. So definitely check this out. Uh, I think it's one of the best guitars you can get for under a thousand dollars. And I use this in a ton of videos. So check it out. I will link you in the description below if you're interested in that. But let's go through some other uh, chords for their clusters of chords. So for example, right? I, I personally think that I end up seeing capo on three way more than I see capo on two, okay? One of the reasons is if you were to play the key of C chord cluster, that group of chords in C, but the capo on two, it's the same as playing the chords in the key of D major, you're just raising it a whole step C, C sharp, D, everything gets raised along with it, right? So why don't you just play instead of the one, two, three, four, five, the six chords in the key of C with the cape on the second fret, learn the chords in the key of D, right? They're great, they're great chords, trust me. D major, E minor, F sharp minor. That one gives a lot of people problems because they play it unnecessarily hard. Just play it, just play F sharp minor seven where it's just the second fret on the E string, D string and G string. Right, that'd be the three chord, G major, A minor, B minor, okay? The nice thing about the key of D chords is really they're perfect for very easily playing uh, suspended chords 
on that D major chord as the one chord, right? Having that suspended melody on top of a D chord is something that I'm sure you've heard in millions and millions of songs. So you actually get that as kind of a benefit of the key of D, right? Every chord cluster that you'll find in any key, there are certain, you know, positives and negatives for any of them, right? I really like the key of D chords. The only thing I don't love about the key of D is that having the root note on the D string open kind of doesn't give me like the depth of even having the capo on the second fret and then maybe getting a full C slash G chord you know, in this voicing. There are just some voicings that I personally like better, and that's why I might use a capo, uh, just kind of like as a conscious decision to allow myself to use the things that I like about certain keys with a capo to, you know, move it around easier instead of using it as a crutch. Instead of being like, I only know these six chords, so I'm gonna play a song in the key of B, and I'm just gonna use my C chords like on the on the 12th, the 11th fret or, or something like that, right? That just doesn't make sense. That just means you're being lazy, you don't know what you're doing because you could easily play those chords in a different key, like the key of G, if you wanted to play something in B major. All you have to do is find out, well, where would I root a G chord, right? Where the root note is the low E string. I just have to find where that root note is. I wanna do something in the key of B major, right? So I'm gonna take this G chord, and again, if I move this, because the open strings help me out, the one thing that you kinda of wanna use a capo for is to kinda of give yourself access to all the open strings helping you. If you move this, the open strings aren't coming with, right? That's the beauty of that capo. So that would be a G sharp. That would be an A, A sharp, B, the seventh fret on the low E string is a B. So this is where I can start to plant all my G key chords, right? So now I just remember, there's seven. I'm gonna put my finger right there so I don't lose my spot. And then again, remember, the third fret relative to the E string, I have to go back three. So capo on four, key of G chords. Now all of a sudden, I'm playing a one, four, five in the key of B. So again, think of where you're rooting your notes, what your bass note is, and then just get those two keys down the key of C chords and the key of G chords, and then just think, where am I rooting my home chord, the one chord in any progression? If I'm rooting it on the A string, think key of C. If I'm rooting it on the E string, think key of G. And then slowly but surely start adding other keys into the repertoire. Like I said, there's like a lot of really cool different things you might be missing out on. My favorite key is probably the key of A, major, right? One of the reasons I like that is because you can make these cool bar chords and get these nice like big open shapes. I've got some other videos around here about like everything you need to know in certain keys, but again, this A major, oh, it doesn't get any better than this. Just listen to that. So again, that's just one thing that you could do. I prefer the sound of those open strings ringing out on top of all the chords in the key of A, even. even if I'm not using anything over here. So say that I wanna use all those cool things that I love about getting those open, the top end kind of sh shimmer on these chords in the key of A, but I wanna play it in the key of C. All I have to do is like go, all right, A, A sharp, B, C, three frets. I can put the capo on, and then now I can just kind of play all those key of A, cool things that I like, but now I'm rooting on the eighth fret. And then you get like these cool kind of sounds in the key of C that you couldn't have gotten before. And it just sounds cool to me, right? So again, that's why I think using a capo as a tool to enhance things that you like about certain clusters of chords is a great thing to be able to do and to transpose songs to kind of get in your wheelhouse instead of using it as a crutch, where like I said, you just kind of know, maybe all I know are the key of G chords and I'm using this capo just to kind of hunt and peck to find the things that I like best. Start with one cluster at a time. Again, it's just six chords. You probably already know a lot of them, right? 
Uh, check out the Patreon because I go through like all the different chord voicings and different kind of key things that you could ever use on my Patreon in much more detail. But again, I think this is a skill that everybody should have. And I see a lot of comments out there that like you're not a real player if you play with the capo. I think that's stupid because every single key, like I said, has something cool about it. And using a capo can really kind of just, like I said, just be a tool in your toolbox to find what you like about a certain group of chords and then really kind of make that part of your playing style and then be able to very quickly transpose into anything that you need. And it all comes from learning keys as clusters of chords and knowing where to root on the E or the A string to get to the key that you are desiring to play in, right? So thank you again to Court for sponsoring this video. Really loving this, this A6, super handy. You know, I just love having the tuner built in on the side. Every, every good acoustic guitar should have a tuner built in to the side, right? Basically any instrument that you, <laughs> that you could have a built in tuner. Unless it's something super high end where maybe like kind of cutting a tuner into the wood might affect, but whatever. It's neither here nor there. Thank you for hanging with me this long. If you have, if you have any questions or comments, hit me in the comment section, Instagram, Twitter, or the website. I'll talk to you all soon. Thanks a lot.